Hi, this is James from Multiversity Comics here after hours at New York Comic Con. Dan. It never ends! High school never ends. Um, we just, uh, Dan Slot here just wrapped up the Spider Man panel and. With a whole bunch of people. <laughs> <laughs> it was just him in a dark room. Yes. There was no audience, there was no nothing. I was, I was just going, I like Spider Man! <laughs> And the guys from Multiverse just waiting for me to be over. No, it was... It was, it was I have bad. to say, the fourth hour is when we got concerned. <laughs> yes. Well, what, that wasn't a problem for me because the voices in my head, they were, they, were, they, were, they were full steam. They were going great. Could you believe the crowd, like, after the panel? Oh, yeah. There's, like, the mob and you're signing shit and you're like, sorry, can I say that? shit? Yeah, on, yeah. Shit, yeah. shit, 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 shit? Okay, good. Um, when I'm signing shit, and, and like it's just nonstop. We had to get them to form a line and try yeah, to organize it. It's such a turnaround from this time last year when you said you were going to go into hiding no, because no, of Superior Spider-Man. There, there's like a couple bloggers who are floating this theory that even though I did La Mole and WonderCon and London Supercon and uh, you know just all these different conventions, the fact that I didn't do San Diego was I was in hiding. I you was, were in the woods. Yeah, I was so afraid that someone was going to get me if I did a panel at San Diego. But not at any of the other places. No. Saul sent you to New Hampshire. <laughs> no, but it's weird. It was like I'd, I'd done like, you know, five or six cons. And I'd done, um, I was doing like Toronto Fan Expo when that actually came out, which is like, it, it's almost on scale with New York Comic Con yeah. for how big Toronto Fan Expo is. And, and do, I did something like nine, nine to 13 signings or something mm -hmm. since then. And yet there's this feeling, oh, he's in hiding. People hate it. And it's like you're looking at the, the mob and you're like, the internet says you don't exist. Who are you people? Why do you, do you like the book? I like how you entered the Matrix 4. <laughs> internet says I don't exist. Yeah, thank you. Um, you, so even though you weren't really in hiding, there was still this kind of um, controversy when uh, Superior came out. For the for the two weeks, for the two weeks after Amazing came out, before Superior came out, yeah, I was in hiding. <laughs> when, when you kill Peter Parker, is but the minute we knew he showed up as a ghost at the end of Superior. Everyone was like, yeah, oh uh, yeah, you could totally like okay. Then issue eight came out. Nine, and we kill the ghost. Issue nine, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no, it's um. I got to hang out at the set for Spider-Man 2. Yeah? Yeah, and, um, and Andrew Garfield, when he first met me, he comes up to me, he's like, so you killed me? <laughs> <laughs> and I ran some really super fast bullet points for 700, and then the, the surprise ending is superior, and he went, oh, okay, so I'm a ghost now. And I'm like, no, we just killed the ghost last week. <laughs> it was like, I was, I was just, how does it feel to be the only comic creator to ever make a permanent change to uh, Spider-Man's status quo? It's permanent. <laughs> Completely. <laughs> 50 years from now. No, it's, it's funny because um, one, one of the great perks of the job is that I get to meet other Spidey legends. Yeah. So I've got the, you know, Stan and Roger Stern and Dave Michelinie and uh, Len Wein and Marv Wolfman and it, it just, I get to meet all these guys. And one of the things that's a frequent thing they say to me is, you're the Spider-Man writer who's writing Spider-Man during the age of the internet. You're the, that's who you are now. You are the Spider-Man writer during the age of social media. And Jerry Conway was saying to me like, if I had killed Gwen when the internet existed, I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine what that would be like. Like when we, um, when in issue, <laughs> I love that. Tell me we got that. In in issue six forty nine, um, when we when we chopped off the hobgoblin's head, mm -hmm. all these fans were like freaking out. You know, all these hobgoblin fans were like, "You can't kill Roderick Kingsley! Oh my God, you are disrespecting Roger Stern! How how could you do that?" And yeah, and Roger and I were posting on the same message board, and we had, like, direct message accounts. And there's this one point where I sat down, and I, like, I'm writing out this long letter to, to Roger going, we're bringing him back in this issue. Down, the, It's not, he was, his head was chopped off in a mask while wearing a mask. It's not really Roger King. And I'm like, why am I doing this? Yeah. And I didn't send it to him. I just, but we talked about some other stuff. And then when I finally met him, after we brought back Roger Kingsley, we were talking about it, and he was like, I never worried about that at all. <laughs> you know, you cut off the guy's head while he was wearing a mask. Like, don't these people read comics? Yeah, yeah you know, it's, it's weird. Um, we killed off Dr. Ka I keep killing people off. We killed off Dr. <laughs> we killed off Dr. Kafka yeah. in the um, 
I'm trying to remember what arc it was. It was with the uh, massacre. Yes. Um, we killed all, and people were like slamming me on the internet. And before I had a, a chance to respond, J.M. DeMattis popped up and went, Dan, tell him I said it's okay. <laughs> you know, it's like we understand how this stuff goes. And I know, I know, I sounded a little sarcastic before when I said the the only writer to ever make a change to the status quo. You're really shaking things up, and it's really refreshing to see someone try something completely never done, been done before, especially on the scale it's on I made, now. I made J. Jonah Jameson the mayor of New York. He's still. I love you for that. He's still the mayor of New York. It's like almost going five years in, and this is now his status quo. 2016 is coming up. Uh, Jameson for president. <sighs> Ooh, you're, I'm not saying I'm not talking about anybody's future till after Goblin Nation. No S one is safe. Speak. Don't you dare hurt Jameson. No, no one is safe. I will actually turn into the mob if no, you hurt Jameson. No one is safe. So speaking of Goblin Nation, yes. um, which Scott just brought up, it was just announced at the panel uh, five minutes ago. Could you tell us, Could you give us a hint of what Goblin Nation is going to bring to us? Goblin Nation is our longest story so far in Superior Spider-Man. It really is like a movie, and everything's it, this. It's this epic. It's this big story coming up, and everything's been leading to Goblin Nation. All the dominoes have been set up, and now it's every issue of Goblin Nation is just watching them fall over. Just things that you wouldn't even believe we're gonna do. We're gonna do, and one of the ooh, it's. One of the things, a question we get a lot is, can we have a slow issue? Can we have an issue where we see what it's like to be one of Doc Ock's minions? Can we get an issue where it's this or that? And you're like, no, this is not what Superior is about. On some level, Superior Spider-Man, it really is Scheherazade. Yeah. It's like, I'm going to tell you something that's going to mess you up every month, so you have to come back the next month. And the moment I drop that is when you cut off my head. One of my favorite things is that whenever anyone asks you anything, you're just like, check issue, whatever. Yeah, we haven't, we haven't mapped out all these things happening, all these, you know, things that we set up over here that crash down over there. Um, oh, it's like, I'm telling you, issues 20 and 21 have so many pieces that just, they're just, just sticking it in and twisting. And so many people are going to be like, no, why are you doing, no, no. Peter, no, you know. Did you just say Peter? Well, I, when I write the scripts, I always write it Peter Ock. Oh, Peter right. Ock. So, because everyone calls him Peter. Oh, right, 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 right. So it's easier, you know. But um, and it, it's really tricky when I'm writing Anna Maria. One of the things I try to do with Anna Maria is that she has a nickname for him. She calls him Slick. Because it's easier for me. Because I don't want her to think of him as Peter. Yeah. I want her that he met her in this new life. And in my mind, that's how she knows him. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Well, Goblin Nation coming soon. It's Superior Spider Man from Dan Slot. Da New York Comic Con, final day, final hours, final post hours. This is Multiversity Comics. Silver Surfer coming in March. Woo!